Welcome everyone to Agile India 2021. Welcome to applying data science and innovation to infotainment experiences. Uh, we are very glad to have Shruti with us today uh, for this talk. And I hope it's informative for all of us, all of you. And with this, over to you, Shruti. Uh, hello, all. Thank you for taking your time uh, out on this uh, busy weekday evening. Uh, I'm Shruti Pandey. I'm a lead sales engineer at Headspin. And today I'm going to talk about a topic which has suddenly become a, a very, very uh, big buzzword uh, in our industry and in our uh, circle and what it's really called is uh, it's called as infotainment uh, what infotainment really means is uh, a, a very uh, slang word for that would be information plus entertainment making it infotainment uh, but when we say infotainment and anybody googles it up or searches it up or looks online they may think that there's info infotainment for so many different aspects to it right because there's journalism there's media news all of them are same really and what exactly is infotainment coming into picture here so when we say infotainment it's uh, really on the basis of cars becoming digital and it's it's a in thing about um, infotainment with cars these days because if you understand it's not just our uh, tv or chromecast or alexa or phones that have become digital uh, and also we have become digital but even our cars have become uh, digital and these are just some graphics that I've, uh, i'm showing you on the screen which basically gives some statistics as to how this uh, transition has really happened and how it's going to happen even more with respect to cars becoming digital. Uh, what this really means for the uh, automotive industry is uh, as simple as having the capabilities of, uh, for example, I want to listen to Spotify and it should work right off the tab or the digital screen that comes on the user panel on my car right so it could be any brand and i don't want to name any uh, today for this particular session but any any brand that might be and it has a centralized panel where you can regu regulate the ac or take up a phone call or start the music and stuff like that and uh, maybe i'll take one name uh, because Tesla has di disrupted so much and so so many things uh, for the dis uh, for the industry globally, not just in the US, but it has its ripple effects even in India and APAC and all the different continents on our sides as well. So what really has happened is people have started comparing that widget or that digital panel on. Uh, on the car as an extension of a smartphone and uh, i've even researched for this uh, uh, session that i was taking today I, I even researched a couple of mckenzie reports and other reports which actually showed trends that like people want to see if they want uh, while buying a car or purchasing a car if if it is actually digitized or not if they are able to have that kind of a user experience where it actually has a panel and everything is so automated and uh, uh, robotic in a fashion maybe that everything is available to you on a button click in front of you uh, without taking much of driver's attention and if you look at it for a second you may think that oh it's it's actually like a mobile phone how 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 much difference can this really make or add but if you look at the brains going behind creating this technology or working on it it's not really as simple as a, a mobile phone while you are driving or you're on the back seat or the next seat to the driver and trying to use your mobile phone it is so much more than that um again this is uh, the survey that i was talking about people even go about switching their car brand if it does not give them that uh automated feeling or uh, the user experience or uh, if that panel is there or not there and what kind of things can it control uh, not just in our market but even in the EMEA and the US markets like what kind of uh, experience am I getting in my car and how digital my car is it sounds so weird but it is those days when things like that have been happening and are happening uh, which makes all these things uh, even more insightful, not just as a researcher, not just as a consumer, but if I am in the industry and trying to cater uh, to a market, 
I need to understand how the trends are going and what the dynamics is really uh, coming on to. Because uh, with the advent of smartphone and getting everything accessible on the phone, what exactly is my car offering me more compared to uh, the other different things? And how is my experience with respect to that? So there's a fancy term called as OEM that you may see, which is original equipment manufacturer. So uh, taking a classic example of Apple, right? So if you buy a phone, you need to have its charger, you need to have its plugins, you need to have its uh, headset. So uh, similarly, when you're buying a car, and if it comes with different things, so the engine, the tire, the doors, the windows, uh, everything is a customized thing for that, right? You may opt for an AC or not, you may opt for that panel or not. So all of these uh, accessories uh, come under the jurisdiction of original equipment manufacturer. So all of this comes under the OEM. So the panel that you see is very in-house. So all the providers, uh, basically thought of coming up with their in-house solutions to create that digital panel for the users because the one who is driving is the one who has to optimally use that panel. So for instance, I as Shruti Pandey, if I'm tra traveling somewhere and I don't know where to go and I just uh, start the navigation or start the map, I need to know how and where I can reach. Uh, it has to be able to take my voice commands for that matter. So all of that created in one single panel in front of me while I'm in the driver's seat, uh, all these different brands and automotive industry started creating uh, their own in-house version of it. But when they were creating in-house version of these softwares and while they are um, a great in creating uh, cars because they have been doing that for years and years and years of expertise and not just the brand the research and creating the model but this was a new horizon and by 2015 there was a committee or there was an alliance that was formed which decided what if if we are seeing this common problem of creating this thing in-house um individually uh, by ourselves and not being able to achieve what if we create a common platform and then they thought of leveraging the android os for creating this automotive uh, digitized platform yes i mean can you imagine it's android that is in the background as a os that's uh, beating the heart and soul of the platform that you're using which gives us as a market as engineer and testers a lot more things to leverage on and ship a better product to our uh, customers or our end users really so uh, this alliance made the best thing possible for us and if you see the timelines are given as to by when each of this uh, companies or brands are trying to create their own uh, version uh, of their digitized panel based on android as a os uh, what exactly happens when all of these things uh, have moved past and now they are trying to create something better? Uh, as, as anything else uh, or as any new technology coming up, uh, even uh, the OEM platform or uh, the Android OS platform that uh, these automotive industries are trying to bring up, they need a, a nice feedback loop right, for themselves to create. So I'll give you a, a very naive an analogy. When we are using our mobile phones and moving from one place to another, or even if we are not moving from one place to another, our network keeps changing and fluctuating, right? What if uh, my data provider suddenly puts me from a 2G to 3G or 4G to 3G, whatever, right? It constantly keeps changing. And that's just one aspect of it. So when in car, when you're actually on the go or on the drive, there's so much more data to be captured because you're not just using a network or a data pack or Bluetooth to maybe connect your handset to the uh, panel on the device. But there, there's so much more happening, right? And uh, this is where the complexity comes up to things which were looking simple until now, which were looking like, okay, this is just something uh, what my uh, smartphone offers, right? But it's really not. There's so much more that, it, that is going beyond the scene and there's so much more happening here. And what this really needs next is not just the state of the car, because again, right? It's like you are in a device which is doing one kind of a job that it's supposed to do. And on top of it, you're using or trying to use another intelligence on it and uh, try to leverage a couple more uh, aspects because you want to 
easier ride you want something better to happen you want a better experience or you're just taking calls because you're driving and you're stuck in the traffic and you, you want to make use of the time a lot of people do i mean i personally would not recommend that but you may know a lot of people go about taking their calls via the phone it could be personal or professional in nature but people want to save on their traveling time because they're stuck in traffic too long so not just the calls or the finding navigation but trying to find out different ways as to how they can keep themselves engaged during that journey so while there is a journey happening on the road on the fly on the drive for them there is another user journey that they are taking on with respect to this panel on the device uh, which makes it all so much more uh, amazing cool and complex at the same time. So you're not just uh, monitoring the state of the vehicle, you want to give the best user experience, not just with respect to the driving and engine and the automotive part of it, but even this heart and soul, uh, which sits as a, a digital panel. So you want to understand how my system is performing and what if there is distraction uh, on, on the driver's end. That distraction can not just be getting a phone call or a message or something happening. What if there are people in the uh, seat or a kit or something of the sort which is creating those distractions uh, not just this what if my panel uh, that I really have in front of me isn't working good enough and I'm just trying to hit on the button and nothing comes up for me uh, it's not just distracting uh, it's also very frustrating for the driver in the driver's seat and you don't want uh, uh, something wrong to happen while all of this is going on right which makes this technology to be even much more uh, perfect because the lives are at stake and not just yours but but other people who are also uh, driving uh, uh, in the same car with you or maybe uh, on the road who are with you, right? So all these auto uh, OEMs need uh, to check about a lot of different experience which we, we have been talking about from internet to voice control to hands-free and all these integrations have to be really seamless and have to be very cautious while we are trying to maintain security for the driver as well, giving them the best user experience and how to really go about it. So. When I was trying to brainstorm or think something about this, this is exactly what we've been talking right for the last 10 minutes that this is info infotainment. We want to have a feedback loop where I need to understand the data analysis as to how the user experience is really going about, how the experience monitoring is happening because all of this is not just uh, a user flow that you're doing on a digital device, but it's also about monitoring the experience and getting the real time insight so that you make that uh, digitization of the car even more uh, better. A couple of KPIs that you can find in the real time are, are some of these. So uh, from the vehicle speed, because ultimately the car is what it's used for, right? Uh, that journey has to go in, in place. There has to be geolocation, there has to be connectivity and strength, because what if there is no signal suddenly and the digital panel being digital is of no use anymore. I, I want to make uh, calls, there is blank screen and there is buffering that's happening, which is again adding to the driver distraction or uh, race tapping really. So a, a lot of these KPIs and a couple of more can add to understanding how we can make this uh, journey better uh, for the users. And uh, lastly, I would like to add, it's all about uh, something as a technology coming up new and before it's done everything sounds very difficult and complex but companies who will understand this behavior and will be doing something very proactively about uh, what to go about doing with respect to this setup and how to leverage this industry and cater to the users only they will flourish like it happens for any other technology right the ones who understand and go about doing something proactively uh, for their end users and customers giving them the best uh, customer experience really uh, are the ones who will thrive in the market so this is what I wanted to talk about infotainment today. And I hope this makes sense. And in case there are any questions, I would really be very happy to take them up. Thanks a lot, Shruti. Uh, I think we've got one question from Prasanna. I'll just read it out to you. Sure. Uh, what exactly do you mean by connected car experience? 
Sure. So, uh, connect. Uh, it's not exactly the term uh, where you call it as connected car experience, but uh, it's mostly like we were just using car as a car, uh, as a vehicle to drive me from one location to another, right? But now it's not just that. You you might be using your phone and those were the days when you were doing a couple more things. Now you have a digitized panel or a platform on the car itself right in front of you. You know, the days when we used to have a panel uh, as a radio or uh, people would have their cassettes put into the slot and you listen to music. But gone are those days and there is a panel in front of you which basically gives you about uh, more data and not it's not just used for your uh, air conditioning control and picking up a call by connecting my uh, device or connecting my smartphone as, as a Bluetooth option. But that panel is now being leveraged and utilized as a much more bigger offering in the automotive industry. And I, I would like to say Tesla has disrupted a lot of this user experience and making cars digital, uh, which is making the users um, and the ones uh, having those level of money and even if not having those level of money but there's so much of uh, things coming up technologically with respect to giving the car experience that it has become all connected with respect to what's going on uh, in the automotive industry I, I hope that answers your question Prasanna yep thanks I think yeah, Prasanna has responded yeah, so uh, thanks a lot, Shruti, for this session. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us today. And thanks a lot, everyone, as well.